Just to review briefly, first three digits are Julian calendar, second two digits are the last two digits of the year. That takes us to the next section on crop codes. And when we start to talk about crop codes, uh, you'll see in some of your literature that, that you have in your manual that uh, you have a generic list from 1 to 99 of various crops. And again, that let me emphasize, that's a generic list. Uh, it goes through, I think, 46 or 47 different crops. But I wanted to do that just to give you an idea of, of how this thing works. Now, with that being said, you're going to create your own crop codes for those crops that you do. Noticeably on this list, there are many things that you would never uh, grow on your farm or you may, may or may not, but the thing about it is we're going to look at, at creating our own. So with that being said, let's talk about a couple of things. First of all, if you're doing annual crops, if you're doing crops that are planted this year and harvested within the same year, annuals such as peppers, tomatoes, uh, cabbage, sweet corn, whatever, annual crops, you'll want to designate just a little bit different. And, and here's how we do that. Let's take, for an example, peppers. Most of us know green bell pepper. And so there are peppers, there are green bells, there are hot peppers, there are yellow bananas, there are various types of peppers. Uh, what you'll want to do on your crop codes is, is to take a number. One number may be for peppers, green bells. The next one may be if you're growing hot peppers, peppers, hot peppers. Another one may be banana peppers. But the thing about it is, if you just use the designation and one number and put pepper, and you were to have a recall, every pepper that you're growing could theoretically be quarantined. If you separate these out and, and do it according to the types, then you might have an issue with uh, bell pepper, but you would still be allowed to harvest and market your banana peppers or your hot peppers or whatever. Works the same way for tomatoes. And let's just use a tomato example. Most of us are growing uh, uh, what we call fresh market tomatoes or slicers, as, as a lot of people call them, the larger tomatoes. Uh, that might be a type that you want to designate and assign one crop code number to. If you're doing Roma types or Italian Roma types, assign a crop code to that one. If you're doing cherry tomatoes, assign a crop code or, toma or, or grape tomatoes, assign a crop code. If you're doing heirloom tomatoes, separate those out and you don't have to go down on any of these. You do not have to go down to the specific varieties but you do want to designate them by type. What this does, this is going to reduce, help you in the long run, uh, reduce your liability. Uh, it may economically uh, be the saving grace if you get a recall to allow you to continue to harvest products while other products are under quarantine. So economically, it can make you or break you. So I always tell growers when they're setting up their traceability system to do their homework because this is, this is just very important that you set these up and, and do them not only for traceability purposes but for your own personal liability at the farm. Now let's talk again, we've talked annual crops, let's talk perennial crops just a minute. Perennial crops such as apples, tree fruits, uh, Blackberries, raspberries, anything that are that are planted and they're coming back year after year, but they're going to stay in the same location and such. What you want to do there, and let's just take let's just take an example. If you're doing apples, uh, you'll want to identify and take a crop number and call it apple, and then out from that put the exact species like red delicious or apple golden delicious, or apple Fuji, or whatever. Uh, blackberries, raspberries, you do the same thing. You go down to the variety name when you're giving them a crop code. 
The reason being here, uh, and I can give you an example, if an orchard has a block of trees, they may in that block may have 10 rows of Red Delicious, 10 rows of Golden, 10 rows of Fuji's, 10 rows of uh, uh, Granny Smith, and so forth. If you get a recall, and they call, and, and you haven't done your homework, and they, they recall apples, uh, then that whole block could get quarantined. But if you've got it down in your crop number, say, okay, uh, you've got the different varieties, and in this case, let's say the recall says block B, red delicious, then you would be quarantining your first 10 rows of red delicious but this would then allow you to continue your harvest on your other varieties within that block. So again, it can allow you some leeway as far as your harvest is concerned. It won't shut you down as far as income flow or anything else. So it's very important. So perennial crops, you identify down to the variety. Annual crops, you identify types, crop types. So with that being said, that kind of gives you an idea and you've got a sheet there to put your record. You may not use every slot all the way up to 99. Use the ones that take care of your crops but uh, I think over the years I think the biggest one I've seen is about 25 or 30 crops. So there's still room for expansion year after year. Uh, while we're talking about this another thing to, to emphasize here is that okay I'm growing I'm growing sweet corn this year but next year we're going to skip sweet corn do I have to take it out no leave that number designated on your crop code records because you never know two years from now you may come back in and grow sweet corn again you've already got got the number so you don't have to redo numbers or anything like that that gives you an opportunity to, to cut down on the amount of continued record keeping that you have to do. Let's move to field code and look at field code for a while. Now, many of you, if you're like farmers I know, and especially small farms, uh, they've been in families for numerous number of years. A lot of times fields and areas or farms have nicknames and you may have nicknames like in this case in the examples I've shown you the Creek Field or the Pierce Farm or the Jones Farm or even even such things as the New Field well you and your immediate family may know those but what about workers who come in many times they're not aware of these nicknames that you've given these these different fields and if you tell them to go to the Jones Farm to har harvest uh, uh, bell peppers. They may be, have to look all day to find where the Jones farm is. So with that being said, it's a good idea to put a number to each of these. And so field codes, you're going to use a two-digit number again, and you have opportunity to identify up to 99 different fields. So you've got plenty of room to, to put field numbers and so forth. And with that being said, this, this helps not only uh, with traceability, but if you, for instance, if you put a crop protectant on and the label says uh, do not re-enter for 48 hours and you, you notify at the barn, you tell the workers don't go into uh, field number four for 48 hours, then you've, you've done your due diligence as far as posting for for re-entry interval and so forth uh, you can only imagine if if a worker makes a mistake and goes into the wrong field and harvest product not only is there immediate danger to them but that particular crop will have residue on it which in most cases you will have to dispose of it's not uh, marketable so uh, with that being said mistakes can be costly so this field code method of assigning numbers uh, can really help you again not only in traceability but other ways also so keep that in mind uh, one of the things and one of the the special notes that I always tell farmers when they're doing field codes if you've got any way 
if you've got a big field and you can separate it geographically, uh, let's say that there's a there's a small grove of trees in the middle of it that kind of separates, or a rock ledge where where I, I, I cultivate and plow on one side, I leave the ledge and I do the other. If there are any physical or geographical markings of that field so that you can break it down into smaller units, each time you do this, you reduce your risk. In the long run, you're reducing your risk. Uh, you're limiting the amount that may have to be uh, quarantined. And so economically, it's to your benefit to mark fields accordingly. So just keep that in mind anytime and, and whatever the smallest unit you can do your field, the better off you will be. So we've talked about dates, we've talked about crop codes, we've talked about field codes. So let's go back again and just look. Remember the acronym that we talked about. On date and year, I harvested crop from field number. And right here, this slide shows you, you the digits. And you can see there are nine digits. In this particular example, I have hyphens, but you do not. You can put just a series of nine digits, and it will, will give you the lot number for that particular harvested crop when you go to harvest. Now, look at these examples. And I've given you three examples here. Uh, first one says, on June 25th, 2011, I harvested cabbage from the Jones Farm. So based on the examples that I've given you, and you can see the others, if you look, when we change the slide, you can see that each harvest time, that, or, or whenever you harvest, and whatever crop it is, they end up with a unique lot number that will be very unique to that particular crop that indicates the time it was harvested, its location, and what product was harvested. And the thing about it is, these lot numbers, like I said, they are unique, they're individual, and they follow your product from your farm all the way through the chain of responsibility. So you can kind of see what we're, what we're doing at the farm is the beginning of the traceability system.